So cerebral venous thrombosis is a less common form of stroke that mostly affects uh, young adults, especially women. Uh, these patients uh, have several uh, risk factors that are known. This may be transient risk factors like pregnancy, puerperium, oral contraception, dehydration, uh, but also uh, more permanent uh, risk factors like thrombotic diseases, genetic thrombophilia, acquired thrombophilia, cancer, and other uh, diseases. And the list of risk factors is still increasing. For example, some years ago, we found that anemia was a risk factor, also that uh, use of oral contraceptions together with obesity is a risk factor, even more than just oral contraception. So we, we still are enlarging our list of risk factors. Also, in the last years, uh, during the pandemic, we learned that uh, cerebral venous thrombosis, a severe form of cerebral venous thrombosis, can be a complication of vaccine-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenia, which is a complication of some adenoviral vaccines. And th that really uh, was uh, an important period for study of the pathophysiology of cerebral venous thrombosis and why this happens like this in these patients. Uh, also, during uh, concerning the diagnosis, that that's still a challenging field. We still do see, even in you know Western developed countries, very often patients that go to the emergency are not diagnosed, and then they come back again with a more severe clinical picture because the diagnosis is missed in the acute phase, and that happens uh, probably uh, a lot because. The clinical presentation is quite variable. These patients may present just with headache and intracranial hypertension or focal signs or encephalopathy. So that there is quite a broad group of possible presentations. Also, we know that headache is a very common complaint in the emergency setting. And it is challenging because uh, to diagnose CVT, a plain CT is not enough. You need to require... Uh, to request for more detailed examinations like CT venography or MRI. And those exams are often not so accessible in the emergency setting. So uh, we do need still uh, better um, awareness about cerebral venous thrombosis and also maybe better techniques to, to improve the diagnosis so that these patients are not missed in the acute phase. Then concerning the treatment, the standard treatment is anticoagulation. Uh, therapeutic anticoagulation. Usually it starts with parenteral anticoagulation. Low molecular 8 epiramine is usually preferred unless the patient uh, has contraindication or is expected to undergo surgery like the compressive surgery very early on after starting. And um, but then there is some question still uh, whether some severe patients may benefit from more invasive treatments like endovascular treatment. And of course, we have to manage complications, has hydrocephalus, papilledema, uh, loss of, uh, of visual equity associated with this uh, papilledema and intracranial hypertension, seizures, and of course, impending brain herniation should be emergently treated with the compressive surgery. So there is still uh, also a lot to learn about the prognosis like we were discussing before, and, and also uh, the better management of these severe patients with cerebral venous thrombosis. And uh, because it is a less common form of stroke, we do need uh, better collaboration all between uh, all centers that are dedicated to these diseases. And for that, we are also working on a consortium, an international cerebral venous uh, thrombosis consortium that aims really to improve collaboration and move the field forward um, on, on the research on, on this less common but uh, uh, important form of, of stroke.